In the midst of social distancing and business lockdowns, a freelance writer and a graphic artist bought a bus, converted it into a tiny home on wheels, and moved out of our four-bedroom house. One year later, we downsized to a Chevy Express. Now we travel between Texas and Pennsylvania from April through November while exploring small towns with rich histories. In the winter, we hunker down in Texas in our schoolie and dream of our next big trip. We're Alan and Teresa. And we're rolling with our nomies. Hello, Alan Taylor again. We're here in Georgetown, Texas, the county seat of Williamson County. And uh, we're just north of Austin. And I'm standing in front of the Williamson County Sun office, the local newspaper, which was founded in May 1877 by Jesse Cooper. And it was initiated um, in the well, first century of operation. It initiated numerous civic projects, such as the building of the first railroad in Georgetown, the Wesleyan Retirement Home, and low-cost housing. And then uh, quite a few good editors here. Uh, we're going to look around town. We've got a walking tour here. We're not going to see everything today, but uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll uh, get a good look at some, some of the great uh, things that uh, Georgetown has to offer. And already looking at the, uh, the courthouse, I can tell this is going to be a great tour. We just came from the visitor center. They've got a big old um, sign when you walk in that says uh, most beautiful uh, downtown square in Texas. And I certainly believe that looking at uh, the square that we've seen so far. So this is going to be a really great tour. Hope you like it. So follow us around and we'll show you some beautiful things today. All right. So driving um, south on I-35, I could see this dome. And I knew right away it was a county courthouse. And so uh, we Googled it real quick. Georgetown, Texas, found out it's a county seat here in Williamson and decided to come and take a look. <laughs> and it's a gorgeous site. Uh, this neoclassical style building is the focal point of the Central Business District. It's the fifth county courthouse built here for Georgetown. Uh, it was completed in 1911 with a copper dome, projecting porticos, supported by ionic columns. You can see those are gorgeous. And, and they're on every side. On every side of the building, yes. And uh, it also features a classic pediment and balustrade detailing. Um, the pediments were restored and renovated, as well as the balustrades, uh, in 1965. And uh, it was completed in 2008. They've got Christmas lights um, all over the building and the trees and everything all around the building. This is a gorgeous sight. I'd love to see what it looks like at night. Uh, yeah, the little girl in the visitor center said we wanted to see it at night. Ah. I don't know if we will or not, but... Right, yeah. So anyways, this is really awesome sight. Let's see what else they have. All right, so this is a beautiful, beautiful building. Uh, one of Georgetown's most outstanding examples of high Victorian commercial architecture. Features cast iron columns, an oriel window, and decorative pressed metal cornice. It was restored in 1982, but suffered a major fire in 1998, and restored again as a restaurant in 2000. It was built in 1896. 1896. Wow. And uh, the building next to it is the Talbot Building. It's behind a tree. Yeah, it's uh, that was built around 1904. Wooden storefront, recessed double door entry, and decorative metal cornice. It typifies a commercial building uh, style of that period, early 20th century. Early records indicate it was used as a grocery store followed by continuous retail and grocery occupation, and it was restored in 1983. Okay. Next to that is the Craig Building. It was built around 1903. It features a pressed metal storefront, and it's nearly one of nearly 5,000 
sold by the St. Louis firm of Mesker Brothers between 1884 and 1907. Marketed by catalog and shipped by rail, the metal fronts offered affordable yet stylish alternatives for the public facades of buildings. Ha! Note the repetition of motifs on the structure in the next in the one next door. Right. Next to that, the bigger building. Uh, Craig Furniture Store opened in 1903. Hold on. 1903. Uh, okay. Furniture Store opened. First floor was repeatedly altered through the years. Historical photographs allowed an accurate reconstruction of the wooden storefront in 1982. Awesome. And then the gold building. This is the biggest building on the block. It is. Built yeah. around 1912. Yeah. Contains several buildings, formerly numbers 107, 109, and 111, and 113. At the turn of the century, single-story wooden buildings existed on that site. In, 19, in 1912, ground was broken for the Robertson Building by Mark Langford and Company, using brick to replace the wood frame buildings. The buildings next to this next to this store were later used as a restaurant, a post office, a jewelry store, a barber shop, and the Ritz Theater. Around 1939. It housed Gold's Department Store and was updated in 1968 to a more modern facade. Huh. Okay. It, this building was built in 1885. An early limestone structure with carved cornices stands beneath the modern stuccoed facade. Early uses of the building included a local lodge meeting hall on the second floor and a hardware grocery store, and later the county's oldest newspaper, the Williamson County Sun, which now is across the street on uh, Main Street. Hi. Hi. Okay. Okay. So in just about every town we go into, the Masonic Lodge is one of the most beautiful buildings, and that's certainly the case here in Georgetown. This was built around 1900 with an onion dome spire soaring majestically from the corner tower. It became a major element in Georgetown's streetscape and skyline. The Belford Lumber Company selected heavily rusticated limestone to construct the building, featuring an arched door and window openings. The ground floor first housed a drugstore, and then for a time a post office before a furniture store took possession. The Masonic Lodge continued to meet upstairs until 1982 when the building was sold. The balcony is a recent addition. That is a gorgeous building. I love it is absolutely that. gorgeous. I wish the trees were not in the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, these two buildings here, All Things Kids and Ken Z Guitars, were constructed around 1889 simultaneously. Uh, they feature detailed woodwork, recessed double door entries, plain metal infill, and a simple metal cornice. Um, some imperfections in the glass panes, but they are historic buildings and they're holding up pretty well, looks like. Okay. So the Williamson County Sun Building, this was also built in 1889. Uh, departed from local tradition of mi limestone, these, these buildings were featured, in, in, featured important brick facades accented by cast iron columns. Originally, each one featured identical metal cornices. A stepped brick parapet later replaced the cornice on 709 Main Street. That's the one on the right. Both buildings are owned by the Williamson County Sun, which has published from this location since 1934. Hmm. Gorgeous. Okay, the Schaefer Saddlery Building was built around 1870. It's a bit different than others in the, in the area. Uh, small scale building, rubble stone construction, and lack of ornamentation. It is one of the earliest structures in downtown Georgetown. 
It originally served as a saddlery with living quarters upstairs. It was also a housed a print shop at the turn of the 20th century. In recent years, it's been occupied by professional and county offices. Now it's a smoothie and juice bar. It's interesting to note that there is a break between that building and the Evans building. Yes, there is. And speaking of the Evans building, built in 1902, it's uh, made with hand-hewn limestone to exemplify the Romanesque revival style, which was popular in Texas in the early 1900s. The three-dimensional quality of the richly carved details is a dramatic contrast to the utilitarian austerity of the Schaefer building right next door. Right. You can see the big <laughs> difference there. This is a lot more ornament ornamental than the plain white building. An early fire completely destroyed the interior and the owners painted the stone storefront to cover smoke stains. Ah, okay. So, the next building? Yep, next to that, 1885, City Pharmacy, now a winery, but historic documentation reveals that uh, this handsome limestone structure originally housed a saloon and billiards parlor. Later, it became a confectionery and restaurant before being converted into a drugstore in 1925. The splayed limestone storefront crowned with a striking metal cornice was restored in 1982 as part of the city's Main Street project. Then the Demet building okay. is the last one on this block, built around 1890. Hand-hewn limestone, cast iron, and pressed metal components were creatively combined in this noteworthy Victorian commercial building. Name plates from Mesker Brothers Ironworks are visible on the floor, floor pilasters. The ground floor, originally divided into two storefronts, has housed a wide variety of retail and commercial activities, including hardware, drugs, books and stationery, a shoe company, harness shop, and a tailor. The second floor is accessible by an ornate cast iron exterior stairway, and it served as office space, an early telephone exchange, and a residence. It's now owned by descendants of the Demet family. Hmm. As you can see, this is an old United States post office. It's now the city hall. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's city post. It is a store. Okay. It's, uh, I thought or a that restaurant. Sign said city hall, but uh, it's a city post. Yeah, oh, a man. restaurant. This is cocktails, the, wine. At one time, it was city hall. Right. But uh, now it looks like it could be a restaurant. Okay, so you can see the buff colored brick with terracotta and marble trim. It was used, uh, it was constructed in the Georgian Revival style. The only example of this architectural style in Georgetown. Dormer windows, roof line balustrade, classical pilasters, round keystone arched windows, and handsome broken scroll pediment over the entrance are typical Georgian Revival details. In 1885, a frame structure on the site housed a livery stable, and livery. livery stable and undertaker. Caskets were stored in front and horses were stabled in the rear. <laughs> Having completely renovated the structure in 1991-92, the city of Georgetown was honored for its sensitive rehabilitation and creative re reuse of the building. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, well, this commercial building was built around 1880 with rubble stone construction, accentuating hand-tooled limestone, and it characterizes uh, small commercial buildings of this time period, built around 1880. Covered with stucco for years, it was one of the earliest buildings in downtown Georgetown to be rehabilitated. It's absolutely gorgeous. I can't imagine why they would put stucco over that. Yeah, it's a gorgeous building. Okay. All right, so this uh, P.H. Demet and Company building was built in 1901. It spans half of this block from here all the way down to the corner. It's beautiful. It's an imposing limestone structure and an excellent example of the Romanesque 
revival style. Highly skilled masons incorporated dramatic arched openings accentuated with finely detailed hand-carved ornamentation. Well, isn't that the truth? It's... I know this camera is not doing this building justice. No, but if you got up close and inspected, you would see hand tool marks on the stone. Originally conceived as a hotel, the completed structure was never used as one. Instead, it housed a succession of retail and commercial activities, including dry goods, millinery, oats, storage, professional offices, a motion picture house in the 1920s, and even a Buick dealership. By 1925, the corner space housed a drugstore and soda fountain that is remembered as being a favorite gathering place. Spikes found on the arched Main Street window sill were installed to discourage loitering youth. <laughs> so this is the Atkins building. It was built around 1925. When completed, it was originally an ice cream parlor which manufactured ice cream on the premises. It was rehabilitated into professional office space in 1983 and then later again in 1997 for its current retail use. And then next door to that um, is another Victorian era um, building. Simple commercial structure, bears little resemblance to its high Victorian counterparts. Nevertheless, it is pleasing in its restrained pattern brickwork. It was also rehabilitated for professional office space in 1982. Okay. All right, Grace Heritage Center, former sanctuary, the city's oldest wood frame religious structure, originally served the congregation of Grace Episcopal Church, founded in 1868. It was moved from its original site at 10th and Main Streets to 1314 East University Avenue in 1955. The city of Georgetown acquired it in 1991 and moved it here to this location. It's now known, it's now known as a preservation, well, it's now known as Grace Heritage Center. Features Gothic Revival detailing and exterior details such as a diamond-shaped and pointed arched windows, some with stained glass. Tapered wood finials extend from each corner of the two-story tower. That's, now that's you're on. All right, the Cessna Stone Building occupies a prominent corner here just across the street from the courthouse. Uh, built of limestone, skilled masons constructed walls of dressed limestone ashlar into which handsome arched windows and unusual porthole windows were incorporated. See those on the side there. A pedimented metal cornice completes the front which was restored in 1983. Stone's drugstore occupied the ground floor when this building was completed in 1884 and occupied the building for about 76 years. So these buildings were all built in the late 19th century to early 20th and were all used for retail and commercial space um, initially and continue to be used for retail uh, right here across the street from the, uh, the Williamson County Courthouse. They're all incredibly gorgeous buildings. I would say most of them have hit the, the restoration process in the early 80s as the previous buildings we looked at did. Built around 1925, this is believed to have been the first Gulf Station in Georgetown. Early service station represents the dawn of the motorized vehicle. Automobile registration skyrocketed from a mere 96 vehicles countywide in 1909 to 6,299 in 1933. The stucco facade and metal tile roofs were typical of gas stations built across the country during the 1920s. All right. The Palace Theater was built in 1925. Originally built of exposed buff-colored brick, it was 
was remodeled in 1936 to its present Art Deco appearance and is the only building of that period found in Georgetown. The stuccoed facade features both flat and three-dimensional motifs, typical of that era. It was rehabilitated as a community performing arts center in the 1990s. I really love to look at old uh, theaters like this, right. you know, the early 20th century uh, movie theaters. Uh, they've got some character to them. They do. And next to it. Next to that, built around 1870, commercial activities took place on this prominent corner as early as 1848, when a log cabin on the site served as the town's first hotel stage stop and second post office. Construction of the limestone buildings began in the mid-1800s and continued into the early 20th century. Previous uses include a dry goods store, a bank, and a hotel slash boarding house. So it started rehabilitating in 1981 and uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. All right, the Farmers State Bank building is now uh, the Williamson Museum, and it's free to go inside. Um, this building was built in 1910. Existing limestone building remodeled in 1910, actually. Provides a banking house for Farmers State Bank, which was chartered in 1905. The intact terracotta facade with Corinthian columns is a great example of the neoclassical style for which bankers of that day expressed a preference. You can always recognize those bank buildings. Oh yeah, the bank buildings of that era, uh, just like the movie theaters. Right, they have, have character. They have character. I like, uh, I like the style with the columns, it's beautiful. All right, so the David Love building. It's uh, the blue one. Yeah. David Love was a pioneer settler among those who signed the 1848 petition to form Williamson County. By 1883, he had constructed this handsome limestone and pressed metal structure to house his dry goods business. It was restored in 1983 and features a second floor office and apartment located above the retail space. And next to it, that building was built in 1895 and started out as a dry goods store. And then next to that, the On jewelers, the corner. 1913, it replaced one of the last wood frame structures on the square. Boosted a saloon, it boasted a saloon in 1885, and in 1894, it was used for offices and a grocery store. All right, this is the old Williamson County Jail built in 1888. The lawlessness of frontier days prompted county fathers to commission this imposing fortress-like jail. It was the county's fourth jailhouse. Unlike former jails and many that are in uh, similar Texas counties, it was sited several blocks distant from the courthouse itself. The limestone building with crenellated parapet was designed by prominent Waco architects Dodson and Dudley in a style reminiscent of the French Bastille. It offered a distinct improvement over the county's first jail, which was a wagon turned upside down <laughs> over the prisoner. <laughs> now I ask... Which jail would you want to be in? Uh, I don't want to be in either one, but <laughs> this is a cool looking jail. <laughs> it's posted private property, unfortunately. I'd love to see you inside. You and me both. Well, that concludes our Georgetown tour. We didn't see everything today. We just got a real taste of what Georgetown has to offer. Some really beautiful architecture here. A lot of it high Victorian uh, with some art deco and, and Romanesque revival and a few other styles thrown in there. Uh, but really beautiful architecture. I really highly recommend visiting Georgetown here in uh, Texas, Williamson County. 
and I think you'll be really impressed. I know All we were. Alright, if I don't do this right, then my wife, I'm going to be on the bad side of my wife. So y'all bear with me and pray for me. But while you're doing that, don't forget, share us with your friends. Like us if you like us. Like us if you don't. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us out. God bless.